read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners welcome back welcome back um this is the end of the year and this is just a quick intro and it's gonna be one episode to end it off um to end season 11 which is kind of insane that we've had that many i know but we have got the book toasty by alexa riley by us um they had let's see toasty um was replayed uh it was played like maybe two years ago i think we had it on the podcast yeah it's been a couple years so we had it on the podcast so we thought we'd just give you a little quick holiday book to listen to today um this book is a companion to the book called cozy and you can get it right now in a um a bundle it's called wintry and wonderful there's three holiday books in that um do you remember what those are now? Because I forgot to write them down. Um, keeping Her Warm <laughs> mm-hmm. and Winter Groom and Cozy. Okay. So those three books are in that holiday bundle if you want to grab it now. You can get Cozy and Toasty on their own on our website or all other retailers. Um, but if you want to get it in the bundle, go grab it because it's a good deal. And um, you can also get it in paperback too. So if you like listening to this and you want to go read Cozy and you want it in print, grab it off the website. So... I guess that's it. Is there anything you, you want to tell them before the end of the year? I can't. I can't think of it. Thank you for listening. Yes. Thanks you know, for being with us. Yeah. If you made it this far and if you've been with us this long, we really appreciate it because it's a ton of work, but we love it. And yeah. it's always fun to share like what we're reading and all these incredible authors. And we have so many. We should play. Let me say, I can say maybe the first couple of months of what we got coming up next year. The ones I know we have. Um, we have Cameron Claire with Sugar Sweet Sticky Buns in February. <laughs> We're not coming back till February 7th. That's going to be our first day back. So she's kicking it off for us. And then we've got Alexa Riley with Sweet Treats. And um, then we have Olivia Sinclair, Alyssa Turner, um, Kateri. And then we're going to go again in March um, with a St. Patrick's Day book. And then we have Emma Bray, Imani J, who has been on the podcast with us before. Ophelia Martinez, who's been with us again. We we lucked out. We had some really great authors that asked for, to be on the podcast yeah. again. Um, Carla Doyle, Gia Bailey, Lucy Eden, Lainey Reese, Honey Phillips, Leslie Pike. Um, Honey I'll Phillips, really? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. I know. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. You know, and most of these, like, I schedule out for us on the calendar, so... Mel doesn't even see these until like we go through and it's time to start the next season. And we've got such a big break that we haven't really done anything yet, except I've just added people to the calendar. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's kind of a surprise to everybody right now. Let's yeah. Say. Like, oh, really? <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. It's going to be good. We're going to have some great authors next season. So we're really excited. So yeah. So thanks for listening to us and we hope you have a happy holidays and a great new year and send us some emails. If you want, if you want to talk to us over the break, you miss us. Give a shout. Yeah, we'll have something to read next yeah. year. Tell yeah. us your ridiculous family story or something. Weird oh my god, happens. please! If you have a great story to tell over your over your holidays, over your New Year's, if you have something you want to share, please. Anything, embarrassing story, horror story, all of it, please. <laughs> well, let's send them in. Let's do it. All right, we'll see you guys on the other side. Bye. This is Toasty by Alexa Riley, read for you by Elizabeth Hart. And Kurt Bonham. Prologue. Myra. Six weeks ago. Dance? I pull my eyes from the dance floor to see Bruce standing next to my chair. I've been watching my sister most of the night because I can't help myself. When I showed up today and saw her in the arms of a man, I almost lost my cool. The arms of a man I'd put her in. A man who was known to be a recluse with the reputation of an asshole. I thought he was going to be some 70-year-old man when I sent her out here to see about renting his castle-like estate for a party my boss is hosting. I couldn't get my foot in the door to talk to him, so it's why I sent my little sister Pippa. She is nothing but smiles and sweetness and has a way of getting people to do anything she asks. 
It's endearing that she doesn't even know the power she wields. I was leery at first, but having spent the night watching the two of them, I know they really are in love. Come on, you can't mope after other happy couples. Bruce holds his hand out for me to take, and I do. I'm not moping, that's my sister. I'm watching, I answer as he pulls me toward the dance floor. I should be checking on the party instead of dancing since it's my job. My eyes flick over to where Mr. Cox has been sitting, but now there's only an empty chair. I'm stealing the moment while ass face is out of the room. Bruce's eyes go to where I'm looking and he twirls me away, making me laugh. Bruce and Cox have a funny relationship. I only worked out that they were cousins a few months back. It makes sense now why Cox tolerates Bruce instead of ignoring him and banning him from our offices. I swear it's his life goal to drive my boss crazy. I actually enjoy it, and it'll be one of the few things I'll miss after I quit. Did you two ever get along? I smile up at Bruce, and I have no doubt I'm getting a death glare from every woman in the room. He's charming, but he always has a new woman on his arm and is a little too flirty for my taste. I don't know why, but I seem to fall for the brooding kind. I guess my sister and I have a type. We get along just fine. I laugh as he twirls me around again. I don't think what they do is get along, but okay. I know better than to get between family. What are you doing? Mr. Cox's voice is low and deadly, and goosebumps travel across my skin. Normally, I'd stop whatever I was doing and answer him, since he's my boss. This is his party, or at least he's hosting it. He hasn't been acting like it's a party with the way he sat in his chair all night, watching everyone. I don't know why he bothers to come if he won't even let himself enjoy it. Are you sure you made those billions all by yourself? Bruce tosses out. Because anyone can see we're dancing, dipshit. I can't hold in the laugh, and why should I? What's he going to do, fire me for laughing? Have at it. It wouldn't be shocking, because I've seen him fire people for less. Myra. Cox says my name, but I ignore him. I don't look at him because I don't want to see his expression. She's busy. Let the lady have some fun for once. I glance up at Bruce and bite my lip when I see his mischievous, cocky smile. It's the one that makes all the girls melt when he comes into our offices. I gasp as Bruce is wrenched away from me and then he hits the floor. My mouth hangs open as I gape at Mr. Cox. You hit him. I try to go and help Bruce off the floor, but Cox's hand wraps around my arm and his fingers dig into my bare skin. He had it coming, Cox says through his teeth. Bruce shrugs as he wipes a small trail of blood off his mouth, as if to say, I did have it coming. You got me good, he smirks as he picks himself up off the ground. I'm not fucking around. That was a warning shot. Cox steps into Bruce's space, but he doesn't let go of my arm. I try and shake from his hold, but he only tightens it. Can you let me go so you two can have your pissing match? Mr. Cox jerks his head to look down at me with wide eyes. He's surprised by my comment, but I don't care. I'm done with him and over his shit. I'm not putting up with it, even if the pay is crazy good. At one time, I cared, but not anymore. I also don't have to worry about my little sister anymore, and I don't need this job. He could block me from getting another job out of spite. He's ruthless. It's how he became one of the richest men in the world. His dark blue eyes search my face and I swallow. He's good at reading people, and I've always worried he might pick up on the attraction I feel for him. You'd have to be dead not to notice how handsome he is. I tilt my head back and meet his gaze in a challenge. Party's over, he informs me, and I openly roll my eyes at him. It's just getting started, I respond sharply. I wanted to go home. 
But now that he's acting like a jerk and punched Bruce, I want to see this through. I've never seen them get physical before, and I have no idea what sent him over the edge this time. Not for you. He pulls me from the dance floor, and his long strides make me have to almost run to keep up with him. He's lucky I'm good in heels. What are you doing? I sigh as we exit out the front. Is he going to yell at me? I've seen Mr. Cox dish out a lot of ass chewing, but now that I think about it, I don't recall actually getting one myself. With me, he's cold, stern, bossy, ungrateful, rude, and everything else my mind conjures up. Strong, sexy, dominating, shit. I stop the train of thought so I can't come up with more positive traits. I'm taking you home. You've clearly had too much to drink. Benny, Cox's driver, holds open the car door as Cox manhandles me into the back of his limo. I let him so I don't have to call a car service to come get me, and I can quit. Two birds and all that. Now I can go home for the first time in weeks and slip into my PJs and not leave home for a few days. It will be weird not having Pippa there. Maybe I should get a cat. I only saw you take a few sips from your champagne. Cox breaks me from my thoughts of kittens, and I glance over at him. Was he watching me all night? Whenever I glanced his way, he looked bored and disinterested in everything around him. I'm not drunk. I scoot over to make room for his giant frame, and he grabs me. I let out a gasp as he pulls me back into his side. What are you doing? I try and wiggle away from him, but he pulls me onto his lap. Cox, I squeal. Stop wiggling. He growls at me. And when I do what he says, I can feel his rock-hard cock against my ass. My breathing grows heavy as I press into him, and he lets out a loud groan. His sharp tone and demands make my nipples tighten, and I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to have that effect on me. Too bad it always does when it comes to him. I quit. I try to shout it. But I'm so turned on it comes out breathy. Fucking finally, he says, catching me off guard as his mouth comes down onto mine. Finally? Did he just say, finally? His tongue parts my lips, demanding entry. My back hits the floor of the limo, and oh, my God, we're kissing. How the hell is this happening? I moan into his mouth as my fingers dig into his short, dark hair. I feel his big hand slip up my dress, and then he yanks hard and my panties are gone. Oh, shit, this is happening. I'll be better next time. I've waited too fucking long. I can't make out half of what he's saying, because my body is burning with a need so deep, I'm not sure it can ever be filled. Fucking drenched. I'd probably blush at his words, but the heat from my desire has already warmed my whole body. We shouldn't be doing this, but I don't care. I've thought about this too many times to count. Maybe it could be my parting gift. Without hesitation, he thrusts inside me and I gasp. The pinch of pain is small and over quickly. He stills over me, and the feeling of being so full is overwhelming as I clench around him. But my want and desire for this man far outweigh any discomfort I might have felt. Myra, he asks, trying to pull back, but I lift my mouth to his and silence him. More than anything, I don't want to meet his gaze right now. Move, I say against his mouth, lifting my hips, but I'm pinned below his heavy body. As always, Cox is in control. I clench around him again at the reminder, and he does as I tell him. He pulls out slowly before he thrusts quickly back inside, and I toss my head back and moan. This has been a fantasy that was years in the making, and it's so much better than I ever imagined. It's filthy and quick, and we're still mostly dressed, but his need is even greater than my own. Without giving my body permission, it opens for him, 
and suddenly my orgasm is bearing down on me fast and hard. Myra. Cox chants my name over and over as I cry out for him. I sound like I'm begging as I come and dig my fingers into his back. I'm washed away in a wave of pleasure unlike anything I knew was possible. His big body jerks over me, and I feel the hot warmth of his release deep inside. He says my name one more time in a loud groan as he thrusts all the way inside and holds himself there. I close my eyes while he places soft kisses on my neck and collarbone. What have we just done? Emotion builds in my throat, and suddenly a sob wants to break free. I need up. I push at his chest, but he's too solid to move unless he wants to. Are you okay? His voice is so tender and soft. It's totally different to how it was just moments ago. I whimper when his cock slips from inside of me, and I scramble to sit up. My eyes go to his hard cock that's jutting out of his slacks and looks like he's ready for round two. I can't believe it fit inside me. But when I see the small streak of blood on it, I bolt for the door. Moving too fast, I nearly fall out of the limo and onto my ass. Cox curses from behind me, and I'm guessing he's trying to cover himself. It's late, and no one is on my street, so I run into the lobby and up the stairs. I'm in my place in a flash and slam the door behind me, just in time to hear Cox's hand come banging down on it. I've never seen him look so disheveled as I did racing away from him. I can't imagine what he looks like right now on the other side of that door. Myra, he warns, in that tone that does things to me, and I have to fight my body's desire. Go away, I tell him, even though I don't want him to. I quit. I push away from the door, needing the space and distance to keep me from going to him. Myra, he warns again, and I shake my head knowing he can't see me. Did I hurt you? His voice is soft this time, and I've never heard him speak like this before. I came, didn't I? I snap back because I don't want to answer the question. Did he hurt me? Not my body, but my heart is another story. Open the door, he demands, and I have to fight myself not to do as I'm told. You're not the boss of me. I sound like a child stomping my foot, but I don't care. He laughs, actually laughs. I'll always be the boss of you, I hear him say. And then there's silence. Chapter One Case You know, good help is hard to find. I roll my eyes at the sound of my cousin's voice. I don't have time for him or his shit today. Correction, I don't have the patience for it. I thought I told the staff to block you from coming in here, I say without turning around to face him. Like I said, good help is hard to find. When I finally turn around, I see him plop down on my couch and put his feet up on my coffee table. I'm in my study today because I had to get out of the fucking office. I had to be away from every goddamn thing that reminds me of her. Spit it out, Bruce. What do you want? I was drinking coffee, but now I feel like something stronger. Six weeks and nothing. I should have never left her apartment that night. Fuck, I'm a bastard for what I did, and then I just walked away thinking I had time, that I'd make her see how much I wanted her. But it all went to complete shit. Can't I come by and see my favorite cousin? I'm your only cousin, and I don't even like you. I grind my teeth as I walk over to my desk and push around some papers on it for no reason other than to have something to do. Ouch, that hurt my feelings. I stare at him and raise an eyebrow. I mean, if I had them, that might have hurt, he offers, and I go back to organizing papers. 
Most of the shit on my desk is from the investigators to whom I've paid an embarrassing amount of money to locate Myra. But so far they've come up with nothing. It's like she was a figment of my imagination and she's disappeared into the wind. How can someone leave this hole in my chest and then just walk away? I'm sure the staff can make you some food if that's why you stop by. I'm trying to get rid of Bruce, and this is my nice way of doing it. He won't get this offer again. The next time I tell him to leave, it's going to be by me kicking him out of my front door. I do love that chocolate mousse thing your cook makes, but that's not why I'm here. I hear him stand up as he walks over and drops a newspaper down on my desk. It's turned to page six where the wedding announcements are, and I see someone that looks like Myra. Before I can form a thought, I grab it up and hold it close to my face. Relief and anger hit me all at once when I realize it's not her. I toss the paper down, and I'm agitated because I got my hopes up, but my cousin pushes it back towards me. Did you even bother to see who it is? I glance down at the names and see under the engagement photo is the name Pippa Michaels. Notice anything familiar? She has a sister? I can feel my eyebrows pull together as I think about a time when she ever mentioned having a sister. I thought she was an only child, but maybe that came from me just assuming. For all the attention I paid to her, I never got close enough to know everything. I can tell you how she takes her coffee and how she chews on her pinky nail when she's nervous. I can predict her mood based on how she tilts her head after I tell her good morning. For years I've watched her and memorized things that only I could possibly know. But somehow I missed vital details like where the fuck she would disappear to if she ever decided to run. I miss the forest for the trees. Bruce is the one to roll his eyes this time, as he points down farther in the article. I scan it, and see that her sister is getting married to some wealthy heir with a castle. Is that the same place? Bruce cuts me off with his loud sigh, and I look up to see him shaking his head. For a bright man, you are as thick as oatmeal sometimes. He jerks the paper out of my hands and goes back to his position on the couch. The night of the party when you ran out with her? He tilts his head and I nod for him to go on. She told me she was watching her sister. That's why we were on the dance floor. That, and you were trying to cop a feel, I accuse, and he doesn't deny it. What can I say? I'm a man of many talents. He shrugs and tosses the paper on the coffee table. Her sister is getting married and the wedding is being held at the castle. I know you're a smart guy, so I'll let you figure out the rest. She'll be there, I say, more to myself than to Bruce. Look at him, ladies and gentlemen. He's not just a mogul with a strong jawline. Fuck off. I snatch up the paper again and look at the date. It's tomorrow. It's also invitation only, with security tighter than a nun's asshole. My mind is at work, and I know that I can't let this opportunity pass me by. I've searched high and low, and there hasn't been a scrap of evidence to lead me to her. This is my one chance, and I have to get on that property. I've got plenty of connections and I can call in some favors. Someone somewhere has got to know someone dirty enough to do what it takes. There's another thud, and I look down on the coffee table to see a cream envelope. Before I can make out the foil lettering on it, Bruce puts the heel of his shoe down over it and looks up at me. That's your golden ticket, Willy Wonka. But there are strings attached. I clench my fists at my side as he raises his chin in challenge. We're pretty evenly matched in size, but I have anger and need on my side. Although Bruce would fight dirty, so I'm not 100% on the outcome. 
Of course there is. I try and stay calm, but meanwhile my insides are on fire. Just tell me what you want and it's yours. He gives me a cocky smile as he leans back and puts his arms out on the sofa. I want Myra. No. I take a step toward him, but the asshole doesn't even flinch. Why the fuck are you saying that? You don't want her. You brought this here because you know she's mine. He sits forward and steeples his fingers in front of him. But is she yours, Case? I look around and I don't see her. And the last time I checked, she quit to get away from you. That's enough to snap my temper and I lunge for him. The motherfucker laughs as he pushes me just as I fall on him and I end up on the couch beside him. Take it or leave it, cousin, but those are my terms. You told me where the wedding is. I can find my own way, I say. But even as I try to think of how, Bruce would be the one person on earth that could somehow make it happen. Fuck. Why? Why the fuck are you after her? Is it because you know I want her? He shrugs as he grabs the invitation and puts it in his jacket. There are so many other ways to get under your skin, but I'd like to present this to you as a challenge. I sit up on the couch and he stands and walks over to my desk to put some distance between us. Talk, I say through gritted teeth, and I wonder if I've got a weapon in here I could use on him. Be my plus one to the wedding. Let Myra decide who she's happy to see and who she's willing to, shall we say, entertain. I'll end you, I say, standing up from the couch. I'll take that as a yes. Good, he answers before I have a chance to. I'll pick you up tomorrow at six. He goes to walk out and I take a step toward him. He turns around and smiles at me like he hasn't come in and dropped a grenade. Oh, and it's black tie. He winks before he walks out the door and closes it behind him. Fuck! I roar, shoving the contents of my desk to the floor in one swipe. I can hear his laughter down the hall as he walks away. Chapter 2 Myra I fight to keep from wiggling around like my sister, but I think I'm more anxious than her right now. These last six weeks have been an emotional roller coaster. I've done well at hiding it, but I've always been good at that. You got ants in your pants? I tease Pippa. She's so freaking happy right now, I think she might burst if she finds out she's knocked up. I have a feeling she is because she and her soon-to-be husband can't keep their hands off each other. It's adorable, and I'd be a liar if I didn't admit that I was jealous of their love. They have something everyone else longs for. No pants. She points to the robe she has on. She wants to wait to take the pregnancy test before she puts on her wedding dress, and I don't blame her. The thing is a handful, but it fits. If you're going to get married in a castle, you have to do it in a dress fit for a princess. At least that's what I told her when she was trying on dress after dress. She's almost here. I barely get the words out and there's a knock at the door. I rush over toward it, trying to keep my composure the best I can. I pull open the door and grab the bag from one of the housekeepers and give her a quick thanks before shutting the door. I turn to see my sister giving me a funny look and I hold the bag out wanting her attention off me and back on her own pregnancy. She rushes over to me and grabs the bag, then dumps it out onto the bed. How many did you get? She giggles. I only need one. I stare down at the test as I stand next to her. This is not how I thought my life was going to turn out when I decided to quit my job. Honestly, I didn't know how it would go, but this is not one of the ways I would have guessed. I reach down and pick one up, and I have to fight to keep my hands from shaking. I'm going to take one, too, I tell her. 
I'm pretty sure I'm pregnant after getting sick again this morning. That's three mornings in a row, along with other small signs. I've been ignoring them and trying to stay focused on Pippa's wedding, but when she brought up that she might be pregnant and wanted a test, I found that I needed to know myself. You little sneak, who have you been giving it up to? She playfully smacks my arm with her pregnancy test. Wait, I watch her try and think of who it might be because I'm sure she's shocked. I never date. And how would I have had the time working as much as I do? If I wasn't working, I was with my sister. It's how life has always been for me. I fell into a maternal role with her, but as we've grown older, it shifted back to being sisters. She doesn't need me to take care of her anymore, and I find I can lean on her from time to time. Stop trying to guess. I give her a playful smack on the arm, this time with my pregnancy test. I should have kept my mouth shut. Besides, you've kept enough from me. I point to the test, reminding her how in one day I learned she hadn't just moved out of our place, but she was getting married and madly in love. I wasn't really keeping Timber a secret, she defends. She kind of was, but I'm going to let it slide because it's partially my fault. I hadn't realized what was going on since Cox had me so busy at work and away in our New York offices that I missed it. Let's just take the test, I push, not wanting to get into this right now. It's her wedding day. You're right. Let's take the test, she agrees. She locks her arm with mine and goes into the bathroom. I'm here for you. I know. I push her toward the toilet area. You go first. I flip the box to glance over the instructions to make sure I know what I'm doing. When Pippa is done, I go next, and then we both stand at the sink together. You going to tell me who? She asks as soon as mine shows pregnant almost instantly. The air in my lungs freezes. I'm going to have to see him. I'm going to have to tell him. There's no avoiding him anymore. At least I think I'm avoiding him. If he isn't looking for me, is it really avoiding? I wouldn't know either way. I didn't give him or myself the chance to know, and I didn't want to. Which way would it hurt more? Him coming back or him not coming back? Not today. I mumble. I'm freaking scared as hell, but happy too. It's all so overwhelming. My eyes start to water when Pippa's test shows up as positive too. We're pregnant, she says, turning to face me. She grabs my hands as my eyes meet hers. You'll make a wonderful mom. I know that because you've been one for me. I pull her into a hug and close my eyes. I was having a mild freak out inside, but she knew just what to say. We're having babies together. I squeeze her tighter, knowing no matter what, she'll be here for me. Pippa and I can get through anything as long as we have each other. It's crazy, but this was meant to be. She pulls back to look at me. You sent me right to my happily ever after. You're going to get yours too. Not everyone gets a happily ever after, Pippa. I reach out and play with the ends of her hair. Mr. Cox is not the kind of man that gives you a happily ever after. I don't know what kind of man he is when it comes to this kind of thing, but he isn't like his cousin. Bruce had women coming and going, but I don't know anything about Cox's personal life. I'm not sure he has one with as much as he works. You will, she pushes as if she can make it so. I want her to focus on her happily ever after right now. It's why I've kept myself so busy these last six weeks, so that I didn't freak out over what happened with me and Mr. Cox. Case, I mentally correct. He's been inside me and I quit, so I don't have to call him Mr. Cox anymore. Oh God, I'm having his baby. Don't go there right now. I try to stop the spiraling thoughts. Let's get you married. I motion towards her robe, knowing it's time to get her in her dress. Our hair and makeup is done, and I'm already in my dress. 
I get to tell Timber, Pippa buzzes with excitement. Help me put on this thing. She pulls me from the bathroom and her excitement takes over as we get her into her dress. You look beautiful, I smile at her, trying to fight the tears. She's not a little girl anymore. I should have known she'd end up tucked away in a castle somewhere with children under her feet as she knits. You don't look so bad yourself, she nudges me. I give her a smile before getting my phone and making sure things are good to go. They're ready, I confirm, when I get a text back. They must be tired from holding Timber back, she beams, looking oh so happy about that. He's been a handful today, I laugh. He kept asking if we could move the time of the wedding up so it was over sooner. It's sweet he can't wait to marry Pippa. I hold my arm out for her to take, and she locks it with mine. I can smell all the frangipani flowers before we reach the top of the stairs, since the place is covered in them. I think I ordered every single one that was in the city since Timber wanted as many as he could get for the wedding. We stop when we reach the top of the steps. I look down to make sure everything is how I instructed. My eyes roam over the flowers and toward the front where Timber is standing. And then they keep drifting. I pause when I see Case, and all the air leaves my lungs. What the hell is he doing here? Is that? My sister whispers, but I cut her off. Let's do this. I move to step down the stairs and force myself to look away from Case. I have no idea what he's doing here, but this wedding is happening. I'll have him kicked out after the ceremony is over so he doesn't cause a scene. Is he friends with Timber? I would have seen his name on the invites. When we reach the bottom of the stairs, I'm almost certain he stared a hole right through me. I want to snap at him and ask him what the hell he's looking at. Instead, I kiss both my sister's cheeks before passing her over to Timber. My eyes water all over again as my emotions get the best of me. This is all so much. I flick my gaze over to Case, who is still staring at me, looking pissed. No, scratch that. He looks livid. Good. That makes two of us. Chapter 3 Case When the ceremony is over, I make a direct path for Myra, but she's swept up in the crowd. I have to stand back and watch her smile and hug people as they come up and tell her what an incredible job she did on planning the party. Of course she did an amazing job. Everything she touches turns to gold. Except me. The thought enters my mind like a doubtful little worm at the exact moment I see Bruce go over and give her a hug. Red, angry stars cloud my vision as I see her beam at him and then hug him again. Again. Why is she so fucking happy to see him? All he did was walk around the office with nothing to do and eat the good snacks she liked in the break room. I can't sit back and let him make a move. So I push my way forward and come up right behind them. Yeah, I got the invite from Timber, Bruce says, and I watch Myra's eyes widen. I did some work for him a couple of weeks ago, and he invited me. He even let it slip that you were living out here. Small world, isn't it? She narrows her eyes at him, but keeps smiling. So very small. Well, anyway, I'll let you speak to your guests. Save me a dance for later? You bet, she answers, and he leans in and kisses her on the cheek. I want to pull him away from her and then rip his lips off his face. But I have to show some kind of decorum. This is her sister's wedding, and I don't want to embarrass her. Just as Bruce steps out of the way, I walk forward and take her by the arm. I don't say a word as I lead her out of the line and away from the crowd. I have to go back there and greet the guests, she says with a tight smile as we pass a few caterers. I'm a guest. When we get to the end of a long hall, there's a door to the right and I walk in. 
No, you're not. Her words are sharp, and they should hurt me. But damn, I do miss the sound of her voice. As soon as I walk into the room, I slam the door and push her up against it. I cage her there with my hands on either side of her as I lean in close. Six weeks. She won't look at me as she shrugs. You're not my boss anymore. Enough. I push away from her and take a step back. Enough, Myra. Enough what? I'm busy. She crosses her arms and still won't meet my eyes, and it's driving me fucking crazy. You're going to go around this wedding and play nice and make sure everyone is having a good time. But when it's over, you're coming with me. That gets her attention. When she turns her dark blue eyes on me, I swear to God she could bring me to my knees with one command. She's been driving me crazy for years, and she has no idea the power she holds over me. I'm not going anywhere. I don't work for you anymore, Mr. Cox. I quit, remember? Her cheeks are flushed. I hate how she says my name. I stomp back over and press my body up against hers so she's pinned to the door. I came inside you, remember? Her mouth opens, and I lean in so my lips are only a breath from hers. That's the day you became mine, and you won't ever be rid of me. Without a warning, I take her mouth and kiss her like a man that's been in the desert and she's my first drink of water. She opens her mouth, no doubt to yell at me, but I take the advantage and slide my tongue over hers. Her hands come to my chest, and at first I think she's going to push me away. But instead, she fists my jacket, and damn if she doesn't pull me closer. I grab her hips and her legs come around me, but her dress is too fucking tight and it keeps me from getting closer to her center, to her warmth. The kiss is bruising and rough, like I've been locked up and now I'm free to claim my woman. I'm so fucking angry at her for running away and then hiding from me. How could she fucking do this to me? Can't she see I can't breathe without her, live without her? There's a knock on the door I have her pinned against, and it's a bucket of ice water over her. I lean back and see the fire in her eyes just before her hand strikes my cheek. The sting of her palm on my skin there shocks me but not enough to let her go. Myra, are you in there? The female voice on the other side of the door says. It's Celia. We've got a problem with some of the seating arrangements. Let me go, Myra says through clenched teeth, and I shake my head. Not until you agree this bullshit is up and you're coming home with me tonight. She shakes her head, and I become an immovable wall. Then I'll just have to push you in my limo and fuck you like last time. This time when her hand comes up to slap me, I grab her wrist to keep her palm from making contact. Don't tell me you don't slide your hand between your legs every night and think about it. I bring her wrist to my mouth and brush my lips down the tender skin there. Tell me you don't come on your fingers while you yearn for them to be my cock. Now she's the one to lean in, and for a second I think she's going to kiss me. The second I got out of that limo, I forgot your name. I drop her hand like it's on fire, and I can't read the look in her eyes. She takes the opportunity to slip out and open the door. The petite dark-haired woman on the other side of the door has worried eyes as she looks between us. Is everything okay, Miss Myra? she asks and I watch as Myra straightens her shoulders. Don't worry, he's no one. When she goes to walk away from me, I call out her name. Myra. She pauses, and although she doesn't turn around, she does peek over her shoulder. That's strike two. She licks her lips and resumes her stride down the hall, and I clench my fists at my sides. She can play this game a little longer, but we both know how it will end. 
Chapter 4 Myra Are you hiding out in here? I turn at the sound of Celia's voice. I thought I was going to have a stolen moment with my third piece of wedding cake. Okay, maybe it's my fourth, but I tried to hide my cake shame in the kitchen this time. I was going to eat it alone without someone watching and possibly judging. I'm not hiding. That is a complete lie. Case can stare at someone else for a few minutes, and the thought turns my stomach. No, that's the cake, or the baby. Sure, Celia chuckles before heading back out of the kitchen and leaving me alone once again. The second she exits, Case walks in. I roll my eyes and walk quickly with my cake out the other door. I dart back into the reception area, knowing that if I stay with the crowd of people, it will keep him at bay, for now. My time is running out and the wedding will come to an end soon. I don't know what's going to happen afterwards, but Case never bluffs. I take my seat next to my sister's empty chair. Timber has her on his lap and is feeding her cake. She's living the dream in her castle with all these desserts and dancing the night away. I smile at them because I'm so happy for her. She's going to have it all. And if anyone deserves that, it's her. Pippa lights up anything she touches with her sweet soul. It's impossible to look at her and not smile. After getting to know Timber over the last few weeks, I see how he needs her and he'll spend his life worshiping my sister. Where's your shadow? Bruce asks as he sits down in the seat next to me. I watch as Timber carries Pippa out onto the dance floor once again. What? I pretend I have no idea what he's talking about as I take another bite of my cake. I look across the room and like always, my eyes find cases. He's staring right at me just like he's been doing all night. A beautiful woman walks in my line of sight, blocking my view for a second. You know who I'm talking about. I turn to Bruce, who's looking at the woman and his eyes pause on her cleavage. I shake my head at him, not the least bit surprised. When I glance at Case, I see he didn't even notice her. Why did you bring him here? Case has been giving Bruce death stares all night. I'm pretty sure they almost got into another fistfight an hour ago. It's rather entertaining. Bruce shifts and leans in closer to me. His arm goes around my chair and his eyes dance with mischief. He's terrible. I'm terrible too, because I lean toward him. I've worked with Bruce and gotten to know him during my years working for Case. I know Bruce is harmless and isn't going to do something like kiss me, he enjoys fucking with Case. And for some reason, I want to play along. His words have been messing with me all night, and I'd like to get under his skin a bit. Timber! I jerk away from Bruce at the sound of my sister's shout. Timber is pushing Case, and I see him point a finger at him. You need to calm down. I'm calm, Case says but I can tell by the tone of his voice he's anything but. Now you've done it, I whisper at Bruce, who only chuckles. You did it too. He leans back in his chair and puts his hands behind his head. I did, damn it. I pop up from my chair as my sister tries to get between Case and Timber. You don't look fucking calm. Timber throws back, tucking my sister into his side. Not at all. Pippa's tone has me pausing for a moment. She's pissed too? I guess I have to be the voice of reason. It's fine. Mr. Cox was just leaving. I put my hand on Case's chest. And when I push, he actually takes a step back. His arm wraps around my waist, taking me with him. Don't manhandle my sister, Pippa snaps. Her cheeks are red, and I've never seen her this worked up before. Everyone looks like they're about to explode, and I glance around the room to see everyone is watching. It looks like two giant men, one being the groom, are about to throw down in the middle of this wedding. Pippa, 
I say in a soft voice as Case's fingers dig into my hip. I don't want to tell my sister how much I enjoy Case's manhandling, because it's kind of what got me into this situation to begin with. Is it him? She points at Case. Is it your asshole boss who made you miserable? Case sucks in a breath like someone punched him. I'm not sure miserable is the word I'd use. At first, I thought it was a game to Case, that he gave me impossible tasks to complete so he could fire me. It's like he was waiting for me to fail. But I never did. His words from the night in the limo when I quit flash in my mind. Fucking finally. Then he kissed me. I made you miserable? Case's eyes meet mine, and his face softens to actually show emotion. I, I don't know what he made me feel. I was all over the place while I was working there. At first, I wanted to play his game, but then other feelings started to grow. It all became too much, and I had to get out. The last trip was too long, and I'd been away for weeks. Case was a jerk the entire trip, and I was ready to snap. Yes, you made her work all the time, my sister answers for me. I knew that's what the job entailed when I was hired and the pay was worth it. At first, losing my time was one thing, but then losing my heart was another. I need her, he responds, and my stupid heart flutters. I wasn't miserable, I whisper, because the need to tell him that is overwhelming. If you were, I'll fix it. I'm not coming back to work for you. There's no way I could, especially now. He doesn't know I'm pregnant with his baby, which is shocking since he seems to know everything else. Like what I did at night when I lay in bed and thought about him. He was so right. I wouldn't hire you. You quit, remember? He shrugs. You just said- I'll make sure you're never miserable again. He smirks, and his voice drops, so only I can hear him. I think I can make you feel anything but miserable. Liar. You'd hire her in a second if she came back, Pippa throws out. I've been waiting years for her to quit. I knew it, I hiss, pushing on his chest. He doesn't move this time when I push him. Let her go, Pippa snaps. I made that mistake once, and I'm not making it again. I let out a small scream when he catches me by surprise and lifts me into his arms. Don't, both Pippa and I shout, as Timber lunges for Case. Bruce is there grabbing Timber's arm, but he stops on his own. My heart races because I'm afraid Case is going to drop me. She's- I know Pippa is about to tell him that I'm pregnant, so I cut her off. Fine. I shoot my sister a glare just as she puts a hand over her mouth to stop herself. I'm fine. I'll be right back. I need to talk to him. I reassure both Timber and my sister. It's sweet that he's being protective. But I should talk to Case and get this over with. She's not coming back, at least not tonight. My face flushes because it's clear what he thinks we're going to be doing. Myra? Pippa looks to me for answers. I'll see you when I get back. I squeeze Case's shoulder and he reluctantly puts me on my feet. She rushes over and hugs me as she whispers in my ear. You okay? Yeah, I need to do this, I admit. She kisses my cheek. I'm here if you need me. You have a honeymoon to get to, I remind her. You better come back, sun-kissed. Case's hand locks around my wrist. You've said your goodbyes. He starts to pull me from the room, and I'm having deja vu from six weeks ago. Fine, I snip, moving away with him. Just remember you're not my boss anymore. That's what you think, he says, so low I almost don't catch it. But by the look in his eyes, he's not playing around. Chapter 5 Case
Thank you for bringing my lady to the car for me. Bruce's smug voice turns my attention away from Myra. He's leaning against a limo with his arms crossed over his chest and a smile on his face. I move Myra behind me like I'm going to block her and then he'll forget she's here. Fuck off, I tell him, because I'm tired of playing games. Cousin, there's no need to be like that. Remember our arrangement? My jaw aches from how hard I'm clenching my teeth, and I ball my fists up at my side. What arrangement? Myra asks as she comes around me. It's nothing. My words are quick, and it's like I'm trying to erase what Bruce is saying. Case agreed to be my plus one tonight in exchange for you leaving with me. He smiles brightly as he takes a step forward. That wasn't the deal. Again, I try to move in front of Myra, but he shakes his head. I said that I would tell you where she was, and in exchange, we agreed I could have her. Bruce is so close to laughing, I want to put my hands around his neck. Is that true? Myra takes several steps away from me, and I want to reach out and grab her. She looks to Bruce as he nods, and then back to me. I'm not some kind of toy to be passed between the two of you. I know, I rush to say, but I don't know how to get the words to come out right. I was desperate. So desperate to fuck me that you'd pass me to your cousin? The look of hurt in her eyes tears at my heart. No, it's not like that. Bruce walks closer to Myra, and she doesn't back away from him. Let's go for a drive, Myra. I think the night air will do you good. Let me explain. I walk toward her, and she takes a step back, putting her closer to Bruce. Please, Myra, I didn't know where you were. She shakes her head, and her eyes are red like she's on the verge of tears. You planned this? I thought, I thought. She blinks a few times and turns around to face Bruce. Can you get me out of here? I don't want my sister to see me like this. You're not going with him. I reach out to take her arm, but she pulls it away. You don't get to tell me what to do anymore, Case. The way she says my name is like a knife in my chest. I don't understand what's going on, but I know that when I'm close to you, I can't think straight. Maybe it's good that I get out of here and you go home. I'm not leaving without you. I plant my feet as if to show her that I'm not moving. Pippa and Timber are leaving in a few minutes for their honeymoon. I'm not going to be here arguing with you when they walk out. She shakes her head. What we did shouldn't have happened. It wasn't a mistake, I growl, and she shakes her head. That's not what I'm saying. Her voice is so sharp, and I don't understand why. I shouldn't have given myself to someone who never appreciated me. I can't change what happened, but I won't let it happen again. Well now, this is getting juicy, Bruce chimes in, and I want to punch him in the mouth. Shut up, Myra and I both say in unison. Please, don't let me interrupt, he says, beaming from ear to ear. Myra, come with me and let me explain. She stares at me for a second, and I jump at the hesitation. I promise to keep my hands to myself. I just need to talk to you, to be in the same space as you. I pause as she contemplates her answer. Please? She cocks her head to the side, and I see a hint of a smile. That's not a word I've ever heard you use. Me either, Bruce mumbles, and I glare at him. Please, Myra, I try again, and see the hesitation in her eyes. Give me a chance to be the man you deserve. Damn, I think I might even go with him. The next time I'm alone with Bruce, I'm going to glue his mouth shut. But something he says must ring true for Myra, because she takes a step toward me. 
I hold out my hand and plead with the universe to make her mine. After only a moment of uncertainty, she reaches out and places her palm into it. I gently wrap my fingers around hers and pull her with me. Would you like to use my car? Bruce offers. And if I could shoot fire from my eyes, he would be a pile of ash right now. No? Okay, then. You two kids have a good night. I sigh with relief as Myra comes with me and we walk to my waiting limo nearby. I close my eyes for a moment and offer a prayer of thanks to whoever it is above looking out for me. I think he does most of that just to get under your skin, Myra says while I help her into the limo. Oh, I'm sure he does all of it for that reason. I climb in beside her and feel anxious until the door is closed and the locks are engaged. I'm just angry with myself for letting him get to me. He's harmless. I can hear the softness in her voice as she defends him, and I reach over and take her hand in mine. Anything that tries to take you from me is a threat. I can't help myself. I bring her hand to my mouth and graze my lips along her wrist. Didn't you promise not to touch me? Her words are soft and quiet now that we're alone, and I can feel her heartbeat pounding under the delicate skin. Do you want me to stop? I keep rubbing my lips along the silky exposed area as I look up and into her eyes. No. The word is barely above a whisper, but we both know how heavy it is. No, I agree moving my lips down her arm and into the crook of her elbow. And now? Chapter 6 Myra My skin tingles from his mouth, and I don't know how it's possible, but his touch is even better than I remember. He really does drive me crazy. One minute I can't get away from him fast enough, and the next, I want to crawl into his lap and be as close to him as possible. It's always been that way, though. He does something to me I'll never be able to understand. Myra. His mouth is no longer moving up my arm. Say it. He demands. Always demanding. It's his nature, and I'd be a liar if I didn't admit to loving it. Don't stop. I give in like we both knew I would. I tell myself that this time I want it. I want the same pleasure he gave me the last time I was in the back of his limo. But the truth is, I'm the one with the need to please him. I thought at first it was me wanting to do a good job at work. But it's more than that. I'm seeing it now as his mouth drifts up my arm to my neck. I tilt my head, silently begging for more of what only he can give me. Did you miss me? He nips at my neck. No, I lie. I was so mad when I first saw him tonight. All my emotions came pushing forward, and that, coupled with finding out I was pregnant, sent me over the edge. I'm a mess inside. Really, when I get to the bottom of what I'm feeling, it's a relief. He was looking for me this whole time. I don't know what that means for us, but it's something. He looked as though he wanted to murder Bruce. I can only hope it's not some pissing match he's having with his cousin and he just wants to win. I want him to be pissed because he hates the idea of me being with someone else. I know the idea of him with another woman would kill me. I've never known you to be a liar, Myra. He bites me harder this time and I gasp. The sensation shoots straight between my thighs, and I clench them together as my clit starts to throb with need. My body knows what he can do to me. I could never get myself off like he did, no matter how many times I tried. And boy, did I try. There are a lot of things you don't know about me, I throw out there. If he wanted me so badly, how come he didn't make more of an effort to have me before? You're right. He agrees, kissing the spot he'd bitten. Like what your cunt tastes like. I suck in a breath at his crude words. I've never in all the years I've known Case, 
heard him say one dirty thing, not a joke or even join in when someone would say someone was pretty. I've been to so many events with him and never once caught his eyes wandering to other women. At one point, I thought maybe he just wasn't sexual, but that clearly wasn't the case. I should have known, though. When Case wants something, he's direct about it. If he wants to taste my cunt, he's going to say it. I shift in my seat as the throb between my legs grows to an almost unbearable level. It's on the tip of my tongue to beg him, but I don't want to beg him. I want him to beg me. You're going to let me eat your cunt, Myra. It's not a question. His hand comes to my face and he cups my chin. He turns me on so my eyes meet his. Please. That word again. I breathe against his mouth. I enjoy that I'm the only one to get it from him. It's the second time in minutes he's given it to me and I'm weak from it. I'll say it over and over again if it gets me a taste. I didn't think you were asking. I lean into him and my mouth brushes against his. God, he smells so good. How can I be so mad at him, yet being this close makes me achy? Myra, he warns, I only have so much control. It's like a light bulb going off inside of me. That's what I want, because I enjoy playing with his control. That night in the limo, part of the rush was him snapping. I'd driven him to a point of doing something that was so out of character for him. It's always been there, lingering under the surface, and I think I knew on some level I could break his carefully constructed facade. My tongue darts out and I lick his bottom lip. You can have a taste, but you only have so long until the driver makes it back to my place. I try to say the words, cool and casual, as if I don't care one way or another, but I want his mouth all over me and I know our time is ticking. I never said I was taking you to your place. As soon as he says the words, his mouth meets mine and his tongue is pushing past my lips. He's dominating the kiss as his fingers dig into my hair. But I will take you home. What? I ask. He's not taking me to my house, but he's taking me home? My mind is in too much of a lust-filled fog to put anything together. He shifts, moving me quickly. And once again, I'm on the floor of his limo. It's deja vu as his hand slips up my dress and he rips my panties from my body. This time, though, he doesn't only destroy my panties, he goes for my dress, too. He rips it right down the center and the silk is no match for his strength. You did that so I can't get out of the limo, I shout and my heart races with excitement at the sight of him so out of control. Maybe I should be scared, but I'm the opposite of scared for the first time in weeks. I feel alive. That's one perk to destroying the dress. His eyes roam over my body. But I've been dying to see what you look like naked from the moment you walked into my building. You were in that black suit that was too big for you and wearing those sexy-as-fuck heels. I was dying to know what you were hiding under there. You remember what I was wearing? My insides melt a little as my mind flashes back to that first day. I was so nervous, and I wasn't even interviewing for a job working under Casey Cox. Suddenly, I was not only hired, but working for the president and owner of the company. I remember everything about you. His hands roam over my body as he leans down and kisses a freckle on my stomach. He has no idea that right below his kiss is our baby growing inside of me. I should have known about this long ago. He looks up at me. There are so many things I should have known about, but I'll get there. Soon enough, I'll know it all. His mouth travels farther down my stomach, and my legs spread wide for him. I'm already on the edge, and my body is begging for release, begging for him, 
begging he doesn't break my heart when he does find out everything. But when Casey wants something, he never stops until he gets it. Right now, that's me. Chapter 7 Case I slide my hands under her ass and lift her off the floor of the limo. Her cunt is completely bare, and my mouth waters when I see how wet she is. I hum my approval as I use my tongue to part her lips, and the first taste of her tangy sweetness hits me. Fuck, you've been keeping this hidden from me for too long. I kiss her pussy like I would her mouth, and at first I go slow. I slide my tongue gently over her clit, wanting to savor this. Don't tease me. Her voice is a whine as she raises her hips, and I can taste her need. Don't rush me. I stare at her for a long moment before I go back to my sweet treat. The limo is rocking, but I'm not letting go of her. I suck my way up her slit until I get to her clit, and then I give it the attention it deserves. I slide my thumb inside of her while I use my fingers to part her lips so I can have full access to her. She cries out, and her thighs tighten on either side of my head, but I don't stop. She's been hiding from me for too goddamn long, and I'm not about to let her out of my sight. Ever again. Case! Her pussy is drenched and so damn soft as I sink in and out of her. Apologize to me, I growl, slowing my fingers and my tongue. What? She widens her eyes as she raises her hips, and I know she's on the razor's edge of ecstasy. Tell me you're sorry for running out on me and hiding away in that castle. I wasn't hiding. She looks away after she says the words, and we both know she's lying. Don't. I take the flat of my fingers and pop her pussy on the lips and she cries out. Try again, and this time, don't lie to me. She grunts as I soothe the ache with my fingers and just the hint of my tongue. I'm sorry, she says through gritted teeth. I don't think you mean it. I don't. She tries to wiggle out of my hold, but I won't let her. I lazily lick over her clit, and she's like a cat with the way she purrs and relaxes. Tell me you're never going to do that again. She opens her eyes, and they're hooded with desire. I might. Without warning, I pop her pussy again, and she cries out, and I know she's getting off on both the gentle and the stern. Is this what you want? I pop her two more times and she's so wet it's dripping down her ass. Please, Case, I'm so close. Which way do you want it, kitten? I lick her slowly and then circle her clit. I, I just want to, oh God. I slide my thumb out and use it on her clit as I roughly move two fingers inside her. I lean down and let my tongue join my thumb as I work every delicious spot on her. How about both? I pinch her clit right before I rub her G-spot and send her over the edge. With one final stroke inside of her, I can feel the rush of her release. She falls apart in my arms as I taste her pleasure and devour it. It's almost enough to send me into paradise with her, but I hold back. I want to save it until I can be inside her again, and I don't want the next time we make love to be in this limo. She deserves better than the first time, but I was too far gone. Now that I know she's going home with me, I'm going to take my time. I savor each squeeze of her pussy and every pulse of her release as I lick her cunt clean. It's so fucking sweet and juicy that I can't stop even long after she's finished. This time, there's no hurry to the finish line. Only me enjoying the taste and scent of the heaven between her legs. More, she moans, tangling her fingers in my hair. You won't be able to keep me off of you. 
Just then, the limo comes to a stop, and I have to leave her warmth. I take my dress shirt off and grab my jacket as I help her sit up. I can't believe you're going to let me walk out of here like this. She scowls as I put my shirt on her and then my jacket on top of it. It covers more than you were already wearing. I glare down at the offensive silk, and she laughs. Besides, we're in the garage. No one is going to see shit. Then why not let me walk out naked? She raises an eyebrow at me in challenge, and I want to bend her over and spank her ass. Because I don't want to fuck you in my garage, and I'm going to if I see you step out of this car naked. Her mouth forms a perfect O as I get out and then hold out my hand for her to take. The driver already departed out of the security entrance and left us alone. The garage is attached to the house and holds some of my most used cars. There's another on the property that holds a few of the ones I keep for fun, but it's not practical to have all of them here. I bought this house right after I met Myra. I didn't realize it then. But when I met her, I began making plans. Lots of them. I sold my bachelor pad downtown and found this place in the country. I had the house renovated the past few years, all based on designs she said she liked. I also began to relinquish some of my controlling assets to my cousin and our board members. At the time, it was little by little, so no one seemed to notice but I knew that one day I would make Myra mine and I couldn't keep working at the pace I was going. Every time I would take her on a work trip, we would tour properties and hotels. I would make a point to ask her what she liked about it and how she would change the design if she didn't. It took me years to get it exactly right, and I'm still not completely sure, but the devil is in the details, and I'm her own personal Lucifer. I can't wait to bring her inside and not only show her the place that I've created just for her, but to be able to fuck her on every surface imaginable. I've had fantasies about it for far too long, and it's time I fulfilled some of them. You've got a 68 Jaguar? She turns around with wide eyes, and I smile as I pull her against me. In Sherwood Green. That's my favorite car. Her voice is awed as we walk past it and she trails her fingers along the hood. I know. I watch as her eyes track the curve of the car, and for a second I'm jealous at the attention she's giving it. I had every intention of throwing her the keys, but maybe I'll wait a little longer. I'm not ready to share that look in her eyes. What else have you got in here? She cranes her neck to look around, and I tug her toward the door. Later? This time, when I pull her close, I slide my hand up the shirt and to her bare ass. I'm not through with you yet. Chapter 8 Myra I can hear my phone ringing in the distance, but my eyes are too heavy to open. I snuggle into the warm bed and let out a contented sigh. My body feels... Before I can finish that thought, my eyes spring open. My body feels good, but it's pregnant. I'm pregnant. Not only that, I'm with Case. I don't remember much after he carried me inside. He'd been so starved, I don't know how many times he made me come with his mouth between my legs. But he couldn't get enough. Over and over, he'd demand one more. Then I'm pretty sure I blacked out from pleasure. Is that possible? Either way, my body was only able to take so much, and I tried to get as many as I could before I passed out. He'd been right when he said I touched myself. I would try and find the same pleasure he gave me that night in the limo, but it was never there no matter how many times I tried. The second case touched me. My body responded to what it had been craving. I look around the giant bedroom, and it's breathtakingly beautiful. I'm in a massive bed with white fluffy blankets, and a big fur is thrown across the end of it. Off to one side is a sitting area 
with a beautiful purple velvet sofa and an ottoman table. There's a vase on it that has purple roses that match the sofa, and a silver-framed mirror etched with intricate vines sits behind it. I glance to the center of the room where a fire burns in the fireplace, and my eyes can't keep up as I take in the crown molding and pictures that hang on the walls. I thought this was Case's house. I knew from the garage it wasn't his penthouse, but this is not what I pictured the inside of his home to look like. His office was cold, and nothing but blacks and grays. Everything in it had a purpose or it was gone. When I first started working for him, I had to stop by his place in the city, and it was the same as his office. It had been a long time since I was requested to go there to grab things or stop by because I needed something signed immediately. My sister thought I was a workaholic, but I have nothing on case. He was there before I got in and still there after I left. I tried to outlast him, but it was pointless. I think he made sure he was always the first in and the last out. This place is decorated so beautifully and somehow it feels familiar. I'm pretty sure I've seen most of these things before, but not all together. I want to see more and go exploring. If this is only the bedroom, the rest of the place is going to be spectacular. I throw my legs over the side of the bed, but stop when I see my wrist is tied to something. What the hell? I pull on the soft material and it looks like a tie. You're only making the knot worse. I look up as Case comes walking out of the bathroom and only a pair of loose sweatpants with my phone in his hand. Give me that. When did he get my phone? Do you want your phone or your freedom? He smirks and his eyes dance with mischief. I scrunch my face. This is weird. I have no idea what's going on, and he's acting so different. I'd be a liar if I didn't admit to enjoying it. Getting to spar with him is so much better now that he isn't my boss. Are you teasing me? Case doesn't tease or joke. I do enjoy when your kitten claws come out. You should see my back. My mouth falls open. Did I do something to his back or is he teasing me again? You tease and dirty talk now? I think there's something wrong with you. I pull on my wrist. This isn't the case I know. Is this your place or is it rented? I fire off questions, one after another. Place is mine. He pulls at the knot and my wrist is free. He stops and kisses it and I think about telling him it doesn't hurt. But this gentle, sweet side does things to me. Would he be the kind of father who kisses our kids' boo-boos to make them feel better? Kid, I mentally correct. There's only the one, unless it's twins. Oh, shit. I'm not ready to go there. It won't stop ringing, and I didn't want it to wake you up. He hands me my phone. I told Steve to fuck off and your sister that you're okay. Who's Steve? I search my mind. Doesn't matter because he's fucking off. He shrugs. I'm guessing one of the vendors from last night. Don't tell people who call my phone to fuck off. In fact, don't answer my phone. That's what voicemail is for. I hiss at him. I see a man's name pop up on your phone. I'll answer it. I glare at him and he smiles. He freaking smiles. Case Cox is smiling, and I'm going to murder him. Later. That mouth of his is going to get him through another day, if it can give me a repeat of last night. Whatever, I mumble. Your sister called six times. I had to answer. Is everything okay? I click my phone and see I have missed texts from her asking if I'm okay. She's worried. Case steps closer to me, brushing my hair off my shoulder, reminding me that I'm naked in his bed. More worried than I think she should be. His eyes search my face, and I lick my suddenly dry lips. Case never had marriage material written across him. I don't think I've ever seen him around a kid before. 
I have no idea how he's going to handle the news of me being pregnant with his baby. I'm fine. She just worries. It's a sister thing. I try to brush it off so he doesn't push. You never told me you had a sister. He actually looks hurt as he says it. Can I get dressed? I stand up and take a sheet with me to partially cover myself. Case being Case pulls it from me and tosses it back onto the bed. I put my hands on my hip, standing there naked and raise my chin in challenge. I rather enjoy that you don't bite your tongue anymore, that my kitten's claws have come out. His comment should make me mad, but I'm starting to see he's been pushing me all this time. I let out a small laugh. I rather enjoy your mouth now, too. He throws his head back, laughing, and I smile. Case is handsome all on his own. But when he laughs, it's something else. Knowing I made him do it warms every part of me. His head drops, and he looks down at me before his face becomes serious. Everything is okay, right? There was something in your sister's voice that made me concerned. He reaches his hand out and cups my jaw as his thumb traces my lips. He's always so good at reading people, except me. You passed out on me and then slept 12 hours. I'm fine. I rest my hands on his chest. I was worn out from all the wedding planning. That's why you shouldn't do them and just elope. I see the appeal. I laugh. This time he doesn't, and his face is still serious. He drops his head and his forehead rests on mine. I want nothing more than to pull you back into bed and finish what we started last night. My fingers dig into his bare chest. But all you ate for dinner was cake, and it's been too long since then. Now that I've been granted freedom, I'll eat. I couldn't risk you running off again. He kisses the end of my nose. I'll start breakfast. You cook? I call after him. Wait, this is your home. He said it was, but I'm not sure I'm buying it. Yes, to all those questions, kitten. He calls back. Make use of my closet, or you can walk around naked. I'll do whatever I want, I shout. Both will please me, so have at it. I have no idea what is going on here. What I do know is every time I get into the limo with Case, my life changes. Who knows how it will change again when he finds out I'm pregnant. I think for today I might just enjoy this. I'll deal with reality later. Chapter 9 Case when she walks into the kitchen, I nearly drop the dishes I'm holding. She's completely naked except for a bow tie around her neck. I can see her cheeks are bright red, but she's holding her shoulders back and walking like she doesn't have a care in the world as she goes over to the stool and sits down. So, what's for breakfast? She blinks a few times as she looks at me with a coquettish smile. I place the dishes on the counter and walk around the bar over to where she's sitting. Her long legs are crossed and draped down to her perfectly painted pink toes. I've kissed every inch of them, but I haven't had them wrapped around me yet. I wanted to give her time before I took what I wanted, but it seems like she's got other ideas. What did you think was going to happen when you walked down here like this? I turn her stool so she's facing me and I lean forward, placing my hands on the counter behind her. Her legs have no choice but to uncross and spread as I bully my way between them. Did you think I wouldn't notice? I thought you might like the view while we ate. She raises her chin, and damn do I love how she challenges me. And how am I supposed to eat like this? I cup my cock over my sweatpants and hiss at the pain. Last night, I kept jacking off while I ate her pussy, and it was embarrassing how many times I came on myself. 
but my cock was by no means satisfied, and this morning it's made its demands known. I can hardly walk with how much it aches, and it's so full and hard it's sticking out of the top of my sweats. I'm not wearing a shirt, so I have nothing to cover the ruddy head that's peeking out and leaking drops of need. You found a way around that last night. She's breathy as she leans back and spreads her legs further. The reminder of eating her pussy and the sight of it now is almost too much. Coming on my hand isn't going to work anymore. My jaw pops as I grind my teeth, and I swear to God she's doing this to torture me. Where would you like to put it? I feel her foot on the back of my thigh as she trails it up and pulls me closer. You're trying to get me to break my control. Some of it snaps as I grab her hips and pull her to me, grinding against her. I don't like it. I feel the edge of her fingertips skim along the waist of my sweats until she makes contact with the head of my cock. I hiss through my teeth as she teases me there, swirling circles around it. This time, she smiles as she tugs it down, and I don't stop her. Yes, you do, she whispers, and we both know she's right. One quick thrust and I could be balls deep inside her. I fought with my need all night. God damn it, I'm weak. I want her to be the one to beg for it, not the other way around. I want to fuck her when she admits that she's in love with me and not a second before. But my wants and needs are at war, and right now, I don't know which one will win. As if she knows what I'm doing, she grips my length and squeezes it. I groan as a fat pearl of cum leaks out of the tip and falls onto her pussy lips. She does it again, and I grunt, thrusting into her palm, unable to stop my body's reaction. No, I groan thrusting forward once more. Only this time I make contact with her wet heat. Are you going to deny me? She pretends to pout as she looks up at me through her lashes. I'm achy. Fuck, I roar, taking a step back, and her hand falls away from my dick. I heave in a breath of fresh air, one that's not filled with her scent as I turn away from her and tuck my cock back into my sweats. Fine, have it your way. Her voice is so light and sing-song, like she wasn't about to bring me to my knees. Mmm, this bacon is so good, nice and thick. I hear her chewing, so I close my eyes tightly and take another deep cleansing breath when I have myself as under control as I can possibly be right now, I walk away from her and over to where I have all the food laid out. You won't come sit beside me? She sits up straight, and her pink-tipped breasts sway a little with the motion. Not until you've finished your food. I have to look away, because the thought of tracing the curve of her tits with my tongue while she rides my cock is too fucking strong. Gosh, I'm such a slow eater. I look over in time to see her licking the syrup off her fingers, and it's too much. Damn it, Myra, quit it. I slam my hands on the counter, and she laughs. How can I stop when it's so good seeing you like this? She takes a huge bite of her pancake, and I watch her chew. You enjoy my misery. My voice is grumbly, and now I sound like the one pouting. She shakes her head as she swallows and takes a drink of coffee. I enjoy you getting a taste of your own medicine. I plant my fists on the counter in front of her and lean forward. I feel the muscles flex in my arms and back. Her eyes widen. The second that plate is clean, your ass is mine. But what if I want seconds? She licks the syrup off her finger again, but this time she looks a little more careful. You'll have it when I'm done with you. She swallows as she looks down at my plate. Aren't you going to eat? I already did when I was waiting for you to wake up. 
I rub my hand over my bare stomach, and I don't miss how she watches me. I didn't want to waste any time. You're a beast. She winks at me and polishes off the rest of her bacon. You didn't have any complaints last night. I lick my lips, remembering her taste. Your cunt has driven me to the edge of crazy. Case, she whispers, looking away. You can't say stuff like that. You like it. Now I'm the one to turn her words around, and the fact that she doesn't deny it says all I need to know. She slows down when she gets to the last bite of her pancake, and I make my way around the counter separating us and by her side. Go on and clean your plate, because afterwards, you're going to clean my cock. Her eyes snap up to mine, and I reach out to wipe a bit of syrup off her bottom lip. I suck on my thumb after I clean the sugar off it, then shake my head. Mm, still not as sweet as you. The sound of her fork hitting her plate might as well be a red flag in front of a bull. I grab her by the hips and pull her to the edge of her seat. On your knees, kitten. This little tease of yours deserves some payback. Chapter 10 Myra Without question, I fall to my knees because I've been dying to know what he tastes like. I don't know what got into me when I walked into the kitchen naked. I always feel Case is in control, and this might be my way of trying to grab some of my own. As I kneel before him, I realize how much I crave his dominant ways. The way he bossed me around at work always turned me on. My whole body would light up when he barked orders at people, but he never directed it at me. I was always seeking his approval, trying to do anything and everything he would ask of me. Even when I did mess something up, I still never got that bark of his. I tried to walk away from him, and I never got what I needed, no matter how hard I tried. It isn't until this moment that I realized this is what I was seeking. Not only is it his affection I'm craving, but his need for me. Now he's practically buzzing and unable to control himself. I understand now that he was hiding what he really wanted, and maybe even pissed that I was tempting him from the very start. Get it out, kitten. I stare at his cock through his sweats and my nipples tighten. The throb between my legs starts to pulse and I need attention. I can feel my thighs slick with need as I tremble with desire. Are you suddenly shy? He asks, reaching down and playing with the bow tie around my neck. No, I lie, reaching up to free him. What he doesn't know is that I have no idea how to suck him off. He moves faster, and his hand captures my wrist. I may not have been reading you right months ago when you pranced around my office. I don't prance around the office, I defend, cutting him off. Another lie? You keep stacking them up. I shut my mouth now because he's right. I did prance around the office, but only when I was in his office or when I thought he was looking my way. Now that I've been inside you and tasted every inch of you, I can tell when you're lying. My heart starts to thud in my chest. Case can read everyone, and I always wondered if he knew about my crush on him. Don't be embarrassed about sucking my cock. I like the pretty shade on your cheeks when you blush. He lets go of my wrist, and his thumb brushes across my face, as I lean in to the touch. But keep lying and I'll redden your other cheeks. My mouth falls open. You will not. I would. Our eyes stay locked and I know he's not lying. Don't pretend you're not getting turned on thinking about it. I know you've thought about me bending you over my desk at work and pulling up one of those tight skirts you're always wearing. I nod. So many times I played that exact fantasy out in my mind. Take my cock out. 
and maybe I'll take you into my office and give you the spanking you deserve. I eagerly pull his cock free, and cum already leaks out of the tip and spills onto my hand. His length is so thick and hard and begging for my attention. I did this to you? I look up at him through my lashes, and his shaft is heavy and angry with need. Need for me. Only you can do this to me. His jaw flexes. I know he's trying to stay in control as I wrap my hand around his cock. It jerks in my hold, and I'm surprised by how smooth yet hard it is. I lean forward, taking my first taste of him, and he groans as his sweet, salty taste hits my tongue. I moan with him, and my whole body feels like it's on fire with need. I don't know if it's need for my own release or to give him his. Why didn't you ever let me do this before? I ask, taking another lick. His hand digs into my hair, and I feel the power of him above me. We could have been doing this from the very start. Why did we have to wait all this time to have this? Kitten, he warns, because I'm toying with him. The longer I make him wait for pleasure, the longer I'll have to wait to get my own. Case. I take another lick and he closes his eyes, sucking in a deep breath. His hand in my hair tightens. And though it doesn't hurt, he's reminding me I'm under his control. You worked for me, he grits out, and I reward him for answering me. I run my tongue all the way around the head of his cock and suck him just a little before popping him back out of my mouth. I think they call this a job too. I tease. Myra, you're killing me here. Please show some mercy. I don't remember you showing me mercy all that time I worked for you. I brush my lips against the tip of his cock. I was trying to get you to quit. He grunts. Then why hire me at all? You want me to quit now? I suck the head of his cock into my mouth and the sounds he makes are nearly enough to send me over the edge. I'd give anything in the world for you to not quit right now. I smile around his cock before I take him deep in my throat. He sucks in a breath and lets out a string of curses, while I learn I clearly don't have a gag reflex. I pull back. Should I make a list? Kitten. You won't come for a week if you don't finish what you've started. I can tell from the look in his eyes he's not playing. At least he thinks he can make good on those words. But now I know the truth. Case is mine. I think I could get him to do anything I want. But right now what I want is his cum down my throat. So I do as I'm told and suck him back into my mouth. I go all the way down onto him and bob my head up and down. His hips move as he thrusts into my mouth, and he groans my name over and over. Coming. He grits out as a warning, just before warm cum hits the back of my throat. I keep on sucking, needing every last drop of it. I earned it, so now it's mine, and I'm going to take it all. I'm going to take as much of case as I can get. His hands go under my arms as he lifts me from my knees and sets me onto the counter. My legs part and go to either side of his. I'm so turned on it's hard for me to sit still. Then I melt as he ever so softly kisses each of my knees that are a little red from kneeling on the floor. Once that's done, he stands up and his hands delve into my hair while he kisses me. The taste of his masculine release is still on my tongue as he deepens it. It's overwhelming and sexy as hell, and I don't want it to end. I know in this moment I'm hopelessly in love with him, and I think maybe he loves me too. How will he feel when he finds out I'm keeping a secret from him? The kind of secret that might change what this could be. Chapter 11 Case Where are you taking me? 
She squeals as I throw her over my shoulder and walk out of the kitchen. Back to bed, of course. Don't you have actual work you need to do today? She playfully smacks my ass and I give her one back. Are you sure you want to start that game? Always a question with a question. Her hand grips my cheek this time, and I don't waste time rubbing on hers. It seems to me sucking dick is giving you energy. I slip two fingers between her folds and thrust them inside her wet channel. Case, she cries out as she tilts her ass up. You like it. I turn my face and bite the side of her thigh as I keep on walking toward the bedroom. Her shout of surprise turns into a moan of pleasure, and I can hear how turned on she is. My fingers make slippery sounds as I move them in and out of her, and her body responds in kind. When we get back to the room, I playfully toss her in the middle of the bed, and she does a little bounce into the piles and piles of soft blankets. She giggles as I toss the fur on top of her, and her naked body is surrounded by white. I grab her foot and begin to tickle it as she gets twisted in the blankets. She screams and laughs, trying to kick out and away from me. Case, don't! I'll pee! She laughs, rolling herself into a cocoon. You better not, I call out. But I don't stop as I move to her other foot and upper legs. She continues to laugh and kick her feet as I climb on the bed with her. You better give me what I want or I'm not going to stop. Anything, anything, please, Case. I grab her other foot and hold them together. She's out of breath but keeps laughing, and I can feel my own smile growing. When have I ever felt this happy? Tell me you love me, I call out, and she stills. What? She looks up at me and blinks a few times as she pushes the hair out of her eyes. You heard me. I let go of her feet and move so that my body covers her. I pull the blankets down so I can see her, and then I stay like that as I look into her eyes. I've never felt anything like this before, Myra. I don't ever want it to stop. What are you saying? She places her hand on my chest as I brush the hair away from her face. I'm saying I love you, and I want you to say it back to me. I shrug. I realize that's not necessarily how it works, and maybe you need time to find those feelings inside of you, but I love you, she blurts out. I don't know how it happened with your bossy ass stomping around all the time, but I've been in love with you for a long time. I don't stomp. I feel my eyebrows pull together, and she laughs. Yes, you do, but it's part of why I love you. Keep saying it. I lean down and rub my nose against her as I pull off the blankets that have wrapped around her and moved between her legs. I love you, Case Cox, she whispers, and I line my cock up at her entrance. I love you too, kitten. When I slide inside of her, it's different than before. She's still so damn tight and hot, but this time it's not rushed. I sink slowly into her and hold myself there as we connect in the most intimate way possible. The kiss is slow and soft as we truly make love. Her legs wrap around me, and my arms go around her back. I take my time as my cock fills every spare inch of her, and then demands more. I grind against her clit, and she moans into my mouth. It's the sweetest torture for the both of us while we build and build. Can I be on top? She says, raising her hips. I nod, grab her hips, and roll us over so that she's straddling me. My hands grip her ass and move her up and down the length of my cock as her pussy rubs all over me. Lean down, I growl, and she does as I ask. When her tits are in my face, I suck on one nipple and then the other, going back and forth. Her hot little cunt responds to it and squeezes around me every time I suck on her. Fuck. I lie back and watch her lost in pleasure as she grinds down. 
Case, I'm... Before she can finish her sentence, she comes, and I can feel the release on my cock. I hold her down and thrust up, giving in to my own release and following her over the edge. My cock swells as I empty inside her tight sheath, and I growl with pleasure. She falls on top of me, her body limp and soft as I thrust the last of my seed into her. I don't think about the fact that I'm not wearing a condom, because I don't care. She's mine, and she loves me, and there's nothing that's ever going to change that. Oh, God, she moans, and I smile, but half a second later she's moving off of me and climbing out of bed. Myra? I barely get her name out as she races to the bathroom with a hand over her mouth. I hear her retching in the bathroom, and I jump up from the bed and go after her. Kitten? Are you okay? I grab a washcloth from the shelf and run it under cold water as I hear the toilet flush. I walk into the separate room attached to the bath and see her kneeling with her head in the toilet. Crouching down beside her, I put the cloth on the back of her neck and brush her hair out of the way. Well, I can't say that was the reaction I was expecting, I tease. She doesn't look at me as she tries to push me away. Get out of here. I'm going to be sick again. I'm not leaving you, I say, sitting down on the floor beside her. I hand her another washcloth and she uses it to wipe her face, but she still won't look at me. After a long stretch of silence, where I'm trying to remember where I put my phone so I can call my doctor, she finally turns and her eyes meet mine. She's crying, and my heart aches as I lean forward and rub her back. Hey, it's okay. I'll call the doctor. She shakes her head and wipes away the tears. Case? I'm pregnant. Chapter 12 Myra Case stares at me in shock. The hand that was rubbing my back pauses and I drop my head, feeling the tears run down my cheeks. He kisses my bare shoulder. It's going to be fine. He places a kiss on my bare shoulder, then another until I relax into him and let myself cry. It feels good to release everything that's been inside of me. Case holds me close and rocks me back and forth. Let it out. He encourages me, and I do. I hold on to him just as tightly as he is holding on to me. I don't know how long we sit on the bathroom floor like that, with my face buried in his neck. But after a while, he lifts me and carries me into the shower. He washes me ever so softly taking his time before turning off the water and drying me off. My whole body feels relaxed, even though I know we haven't talked this out. A weight has been lifted from my shoulders. He knows, and everything is out there now. Use mine. Case gives me his toothbrush, and I take it from him. I brush my teeth as he wraps me in a robe, and I watch in the mirror as he dries himself off. My eyes flick to his hard cock, and he shakes his head. Don't, he warns, but my body still heats. You're naked, so I can't not be hard, but it's not the time. He grabs my hand, and we walk over to the bed. Lie down, he orders, pointing to the bed, and I fall back onto it. Be careful, he grunts, shaking his head. I roll over and watch him walk into his closet for a few minutes before he comes back out in another pair of gray sweats. He still hasn't said anything about me being pregnant, and I guess me bursting into tears didn't give him room to talk. I wasn't crying because I'm pregnant, I say, when he makes it back to the bed and sits down. I sit up and look at him. I don't want him to think I'm not happy about this, but I never thought about having a baby before, and it was overwhelming. Now that I have one growing inside of me, it's crazy how badly I want it. Were you going to tell me? He asks. Of course, I gasp. 
I'd never keep that from you. I only found out the morning of Pippa's wedding. Then everything was a little bit of a whirlwind that I didn't want to end. I wouldn't have blamed you. Kesa's eyes meet mine, and my heart hurts for him as I crawl into his lap. Don't say that. I wrap my arms around his neck and look into his eyes. I've been an asshole to you. This is true, I agree, smirking. I'm sorry, Myra. I didn't know what I was doing. I don't think either of us knew what we were doing. The first day I saw you come in for an interview, I was captivated. I wanted you, so I told them to hire you as my PA. I knew you'd be lovely to look at every day. I smile, because it's kind of sweet. That explains how I got such a high-level job so quickly. Then I wanted to touch you. Why didn't you? I brush my nose against his as I enjoy hearing him talk about how he feels about me. When I first started working for Case, I wasn't ready for him. I needed time to find myself and get Pippa and me on our feet. I think Case needed time, too, because he doesn't let anyone get close. The closest person to him is his cousin who has to push himself into his life. You worked for me. He kisses each of my cheeks. I was fighting myself. I wanted you to quit so I could have you, but you wouldn't. I did. I remind him that he won that battle. Although, even when I did it, I think I knew Case would come back for me. It's why I hid out at my sister's. It was my small way of getting back at him. I knew eventually he'd find me, because he never stops until he gets what he wants. It's how he's gotten so far in life, and it's one of the many things I love about him. I wanted him to prove to me I was one of the things he'd fight for. Deep down, that's what I'd been waiting for. And when he showed up to my sister's wedding, I was done for. After me being an asshole to you, I went too far. But we're here. I think maybe we both went a little too far. And you're crying your eyes out. I'm scared, I admit. I don't want things to change, but I do want them to change. I let out a laugh because that sounds ridiculous. I think I have pregnancy brain. I don't know how to explain this. I'll be good to you. I love you so fucking much, Myra. Give me a chance. I'll be whatever you need. He pleads, and my heart melts. That's just it. I don't want you to change. I love the grumpy you and the playful you. I thought I was already in love with you, and then you turn into this sweetheart on a dime. At every turn, I'm finding something new about you, and I fall deeper in love. I want it all, every side of him, especially the ones I know only I get. Nothing has to change. He kisses my lips, and I let out a soft sigh. It feels so good to be in his arms. I'm safe and taken care of, and it's how I always felt around him. It's why I put up with his grumpy ass. He's like a bear with a thorn in his paw, but he's my bear. A baby changes everything. I've never heard Case talk about wanting a family. All he did was work. But I guess he built a secret dream house on the side when I wasn't paying attention. Not really. We would have had kids sooner or later. He lifts his eyebrows like this is a foregone conclusion. You've always wanted kids? Hope lights up inside me. I didn't know I wanted anything until you walked into my life. Now I want it all. He rolls us so he's on top of me. You know I'm an all or nothing kind of man. It's why it's been so hard being near you and not having you. I've been driving you crazy? I smile up at him. The feeling is mutual. Now you're going to have to spend the rest of your life driving me crazy. I think I can handle that. I wrap my legs around him. I do love you after all. A possessive glint lights up in his eyes. I love you too, kitten, he says, 
dropping his mouth down onto mine. We both have gotten everything we've ever wanted. We might have taken the long way to find it, but fate had its plans. And now, everyone gets their happily ever after. This has been Toasty by Alexa Riley. Read for you by Elizabeth Hart and Kurt Bonham. Welcome back. Welcome back, lady listeners. That's it. The end. I know it's weird coming back like that that, that fast. <laughs> so again, thanks for listening. Thanks for a new year. We'll be back on February 7th with a brand new book from Cameron Clare. So yeah. Make sure you join us then. God, I, I think that's it. Like, yeah, I know. I felt weird. It's like, I'm I supposed know. to stay down here. <laughs> what I'll I see you guys later. <laughs> yeah, check your, uh, check your email. Check your new releases post. We'll still have those up. So follow us on social media. We'll be in the Read Me Romance headquarters group. So go check us out. All right. Tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance, read, read me romance, read me romance, read, read me romance. You could take a look in a book, that's fine, or you could sit back, relax.